Hey, what's up everyone? Today I'm going to be showing you how to use After Effects' Track Motion. Um, this is a really powerful tool to track something into a scene. And what I mean by tracking something into a scene is making that object move in relationship to the original footage. So, for example, you could say that this car is tracked into the scene. If I move it, it moves exactly with the camera movements in the exact perspective of what the camera is. And that's because it was shot in real life. So, physics works in the way that everything is tracked to the camera perfectly because we're just capturing what's actually there. But if we want to add something in post-production, then we need to track it in ourselves. We need to give it the physics so that it understands how to move in relationship with the rest of the image. So we're going to add just a little road sign right down here, a little yield sign. Um, what I did was I just basically took a yield sign, I rotated it down with 3D rotation, clicked this button, then went to the rotate tool to rotate it on down here. Um, and then I lowered its opacity so it kind of took on a little bit of what's beneath it and I added a little bit of grain. Not perfect, I could always go with a little bit of uh, more kind of masking to it, meaning I'm trying to make it look what the scene looked like. I could color correct it. It looks a little bit too clean. Um, there's definitely a perspective problem where the road actually makes almost like a little triangle here, so it would need a little bit of perspective change down that line right there. But for our purposes right here, we're just gonna keep it like this. And at this point, if you weren't looking for it, you might think that it's part of this scene. However, right when I move, you do not think it's part of the scene. It's very obvious because it's not tracked into the scene. So to track, it's really simple. Get your asset ready, click on the footage that you want to track, and then bring up the tracker right over here. Um, you can go to Window and then down to Tracker, or you can go to Animation and then Track Motion, and it'll kind of just set it up for you right here. Uh, that's the preferred way because otherwise you have to choose the motion source, which is just our file, and then basically create different trackers and stuff like that. So, yeah, easiest way, animation, track camera, or track motion. Now, there's a bunch of different tracking in here. There's um, the warp stabilizer VFX, which I've done another tutorial on. Um, that's just to stabilize everything. Then you have track in Mocha, and Mocha is a really powerful tracking software for stuff that's harder to track, so maybe you don't have a high point of contrast maybe it's got some weird perspective changes in it uh, mocha is the best thing for this and then even in adobe's track motion you have a 3d tracker which is an amazing tracker that can put an object in in 3d and be able to get enough data so that it can rotate this object accordingly to the scene which is a really advanced thing to do and something you can't do with just one tracking point because you don't know how the rest of the scene is reacting we however are just going to do a simple 2d track with track motion so, we have our tracking point right here. We have an outside box and an inside box. The inside box is where it's gonna search for first for the tracking data. We're looking for a high contrast area. And we're looking for a high contrast area that is close to where we're trying to add the scene in. And that's just because if we track something up here, due to perspective and, again, the laws of physics, up here is gonna move at a slower or faster rate than down here. Um, the left is going to move at a different rate than here. Even just a little bit farther back, due to perspective, it might be moving at a different rate than here. And we don't want that. We want it to be moving at the exact same rate that we're trying to add it in. So, if we track somewhere differently, it might look okay, but it won't look good. It'll, it won't have a really, you know, a real feeling behind it. Something um, that you wouldn't even notice. And that's what we're trying to get with the tracking, is that people not know that we track something in that it just looks like it's in the footage. So once we have this set up, we're just gonna take this small box, we're gonna kinda get around what the tracking point is, and then now we have this big box. And you know, you can make this giant, this box as big as the scene, but that means every single time it's got to scan every single pixel and look for clusters. And this, um, for all the computer scientists out there, the only way that it can look for a cluster of pixels is that it has to relate it to all the other pixels. So at best, this is probably working in an n squared or even an exponential um, sort of function, which means that the more pixels you add into it, it's going to go up in exponential amounts of time. So you don't want this box too big. Um, you want it just big enough to be able to, if there's a ton of movement, so if like at one part it goes up to here and then back down, maybe you want it a little bit bigger, but all it's doing is moving just around this area right here. So we're just going to make the tracking box maybe just around that area.
you're going to have to play around with this. You're going to have to retract sometimes. That's just the name of the game. You kind of get a feel for this. Um, I'm going to do this and see if this works. We have our footage set up and we have our tracker set up. So now it's just time to hit play. And it is going to begin the track. And all you have to do is just wait around and it's going to keep the track going. If you noticed, there is a little jitter down here. And we'll have to see how that turns out. Um, the jitter might be because the object is just slightly too big, so it doesn't understand which white pixel to choose out of them. But again, we'll see. So now we're just going to go into Layer, New, and then Null Object. A null object is an object that is non-existent. It is just there to store data and relationships between objects. So once we have our null object created, we're going to hit Edit Target on our tracker, and we are going to apply it to the null. So now that all of our tracking data is applied to this null object, and we're going to, well, right when we click Apply, uh, apply the X and Y dimensions, and there we go. Now our null object has all the tracking data, and our null object moves in relationship to the rest of the scene. So let's go back to the point where our original, um, our original asset looked good, and that was at the very beginning. If we parent it at any different point, it's going to stick at that point. So right here, we're just going to take it and we're going to parent it to null 3. You can do that with right here, drop down, click null 3. Or you can use a little whip tool right here and drag it on over. And so now it is parented, which means now it runs with the null object. And since the null object is attached to our tracking data, it tracks into the scene. And that is a decent track right there. The reason I say decent is there is a little bit of jiggle in there. If you see right here, it almost moves up a little bit and comes back down a little bit in an uncharacteristic way. And that's just because even this tracking point might be a little bit too far away. And if that's the case and you can't find anything closer, Mocha might be your best because you could actually set up a grid right here and create a track mat of this entire parking lot. And then when you, wherever you add the your object to, it's going to track to those exact coordinates in the parking lot. But we're just doing a one-point track. And with a one-point track, this actually looks pretty good. And since people are focusing on a different area, they wouldn't even notice probably that this isn't even in the footage. So overall, that is really how you track things in After Effects. Um, it's really simple. You go up to the tracker, track the motion, play around with it, and you can add it in. Remember to apply the parent at a at the place you want it to look good. If I applied the parent here, it would be floating up here and then it would track up there and it just wouldn't look good anymore. Um, yeah, that is about it. Thanks everyone for watching this video. That is how you track motion in Adobe After Effects. Um, remember, if you're filming before, like so if you know you're gonna track something into a scene, what a great thing to do would be is to get some high contrast tape so let's say you're in a green field and you're going to want to get some really red tape or right here some really green tape or even red tape would work and put the tape, just a little piece of it, down where you want it to be tracked. That way you have a point to track later on and it'll make things a whole lot easier. Um, it'll make your tracks better. Other than that, that is it on this video. Remember to subscribe if you want to see more Adobe related videos and until next time guys, see ya.